Welcome to the Untrapped Podcast, where we're motivated and inspired about success, small business, and personal development. And now, Keith Kalfas. Yes, we're live. What's up? This is Keith Kalfas on the Untrapped Podcast here with Johnny Mo from YouTube. Johnny Mo on YouTube. Man, I've known this guy for years. He was part of one of the original OGs that w- was making YouTube videos back in the day before this whole new era. And he's a great guy. He loves God, loves his family. And he, well, today I want, I want to talk about priorities and, you know, your mowing business, your landscaping business, but also having priorities because that first five years is crucial. But you can do like I did five years into my landscape business where I burned my personal and family life into the ground and woke up like, oh, shoot, like it was just a survival mode type blur. And yet I talked to Johnny Mo on the phone at least a couple times a year. We have a deep conversation, 45 minutes, like very heartfelt conversations. Like, And he was telling me how proud he is of the things he's doing, being a great dad and all these things that I used to be like, that don't have anything to do with business. And now I'm thinking differently, right? I, mm. I, I literally just turned 40, bro. And pff, I'm so happy to be around my family. My, my priorities are changing. I never knew this guy. I knew he was in there somewhere, but what's up, Johnny Mo? What's going on, Keith? Thanks for having me on. What yeah, a yeah. topic, man. That's powerful. There's a lot into that topic, man. I don't know if we can get it all in. <laughs> well, we can. I like to keep our shows uh, under uh, like 45 minutes, if we could do that Absolutely. under an hour. So, sorry. That's, I had to adjust here. Okay. What's, what's the first thing that pops in your mind, bro? When you're when you're discussing priorities with family or first five years of business, the first five years of business is really tough, as you know. I mean, that's that's grind time. I was fortunate though, when I did my first five years, I was engaged. And so it wasn't it wasn't to what you know you we have talked about what you described. Uh, I could tell you this that when my first year of marriage We got married on June 31st. It was probably August. I think it was around August. We got married on June, I'm sorry, June 30th. My wife would crush me. Uh, It was right in August. After we got home from the honeymoon, got settled in. I was working. I was working during the day and I had my business going at night. And, And this is really truly what reminded me of what, this discussion is truly about his priorities. So I came home. It was late. I'm talking nine o'clock at night. It was dark. And my wife had come in and I, like I normally did, I jumped in the shower. She had made some pasta and, and my wife was not from this area. So she really didn't have anyone to really talk to because she's, you know, almost two hours away from home. So she hands me my plate and she puts it on a little tray and she said, I didn't sign up for this. I say, excuse me? She say, I didn't sign up for this. I said, what do you mean? Because you're never home. You work all day and all night. I'm here all by myself. Uh, I start work. I barely saw you. I, I'm, just, I'm just telling you, if this is how it's going to go, I, I didn't sign up for this. She went into the bedroom and, and shut the door and locked it. Like, I wasn't going into the bedroom. And I'm like, what just happened? And I, I, well, she, I tell you whole, what, Tim, she gave you the old I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm like, don't she, doesn't she know I'm trying to provide? Doesn't she know that that I'm trying to get this thing off the ground? Doesn't she know? And and I sat there and and that's when I really honestly got this stuff together. Is is I started really thinking about it. I talked to her the next morning and I said, I'm gonna change. Uh, I actually I dropped a whole bunch of accounts. Uh, I started prioritizing my time. And I don't know if you can see this, but I have like five statements I live by. And this is one of them. It says proper planning prevents poor performance. And when it comes to priority, prioritization of your family, you have to plan for it. It has to be on your mind as soon as you get up in the morning. We live by a big calendar. I know where everything's at, what everyone's doing. Um, and you have to prioritize that midday text. Hey, love you. Thinking of you. I just cut some dandelions. They were very beautiful, but not as beautiful as you, you know, 
stuff like that. I mean, it goes a long way. Date nights, uh, getting away, making sure. I'm not saying to destroy your business and, and don't work hard in it, but I'm telling you proper planning prevents poor performance is truly one of my life savings. And I plan everything, literally. From the moment I get up, I get up 545 and boom, I hit the office, book work, out the door. You know, I'm checking to see where she's doing, what, what's going on, where's my kids at, where they're going, what do we need to do? Uh, you have to plan for this thing, and it has to be a priority. It has to be, you know, God first, then family, then your wife, then your kids. So it's God, wife, kids. He's and, speaking the truth. Amen. And just for those of you who might not know Johnny Mo, he's just getting warmed up. He's famous for his, his uh, well, I, I think I'd watch him late night because I work a lot late night youtube he, he has youtube rants he has all types of youtube videos and it's, it's him just spitting straight facts whenever <laughs> something was going on even in the industry go over to johnny moe's channel and then eventually johnny moe if he if he was up to it would upload a video talking about a, a topic and and you could always get the truth from johnny moe man check out his youtube channel so and then everybody anybody listening and watching this right now Hit the thumbs up, hit the likes, hit something, hit it. Let's send it out to more people because we are live. And then we will get to your comments at the end. I see your comments popping up. We're going to post them on the screen and, and we're going to get to them. But keep going, Johnny Mo. This is good. So, you know, in prioritizing your business, keep, keep the main thing the main thing. Always, always prioritize your wife. It has to be. If you do not, you will. I don't know if people know this, but 70% of marriages fail in this industry. It's an industry fact, 70%. And I can understand why, because when you first started, you alluded to it. That first five years, you got to grind. And then when you go into build mode, you got to grind. When you go through different levels and you bust through different levels, there's grinding involved in there. And if you don't have a partner who's on the same page as you and you run over that partner, you will find yourself in, in a world of, of hurting divorce, basically, when it comes down to. And that's not something that uh, I want uh, for you or, or definitely for me, because I could tell you that my wife was very serious, and we had to make some serious changes. The old workaholic with the excuse of, I'm doing this for us. But so when, when, when a guy is going through that, or, or a girl, there's a, a lot of female landscapers too, but when somebody's going through that in their business, they're aware of that at the time, but they have this, this now some might call it an excuse, but it's very, it feels so real. Cause it's, you know, it's your, your experience is I literally have to do this. I have to burn the candle at both ends because if I don't stay till seven, eight, 9 PM and get this wrapped up or get this, or the guys won't get payroll or we won't get the plans correct. And, and I literally, when I first started, uh, <laughs> like, I don't want to say that. Let's just say there were times where I would go to a family function versus do the important things in my business that I had to do until 11 o'clock at night. I didn't do them. I, I put family first. And then we literally showed up on the landscape project the next morning and everybody's standing around with nothing to do. I hadn't gotten material lists ready. I hadn't done anything. And literally everybody just sat, not everybody, it's like three guys <laughs> like, like, sitting around. Because to me, it feels like, you know, but sitting around doing nothing, getting paid to do nothing. And it, it cost me hundreds of dollars because I went to a family event last night. I didn't have anything. I, you know, well, you should have thought that about that beforehand. This is the voice in my head. You should have planned that better. And it's like, I saw so I, what it did is it squeezed me through the cracks of where I was having like mental health issues where I was beating myself up saying, uh, I don't like to cuss too much. Actually, I can't cuss. I'll say F because we're on like eight social media platforms. So I got to make a choice. I'm either going to F myself and F my clients and customers and my employees, or I'm going to F my family. Who am I going to pick? And I would just implode and do it to myself. And then I would just say, the only way to do this is to work up, wake up earlier, work harder, work longer hours, sleep less, and just be Mr. Do-it-all. So I was running off of adrenaline around the house, and I became a complete asshole. And... I hated everybody and I hated my business and I had multiple implosions because when you're stretched so thin and, and I think enough, I don't want to take over this podcast, but that just triggered me, bro. 
Well, Keith, you know, proper planning prevents poor performance. I read a book called Tell Your Time. Tell Your Time. You are in charge of you, Inc. So my name is John. People call me Johnny. I'm in charge. So if I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off, it's because I made it that way. So if I made it that way, I can change it. The word no it is so very powerful. And I say it so often. You know, hey, John, can you do it? No, I can't. Why? Because it doesn't fit into my time. You know, you know, my kids, they laugh at me because I would just, just because the phone rings doesn't mean that I answer it. Just because I receive a text does not mean that I open up that text and read it right away. I have certain times that I do things. And my kids are like, you got to read that text. I said, why do I have to read that text? There's no reason. Just because someone texts you doesn't mean you have to read it. There are times where I will open up a text and there are times where I'll answer the phone. That's what a voice message is for. When I grew up, we didn't have phones. You went outside and played all day. You had no idea what was the world was going on. Now we're so plugged into the world. I just, I just choose, I choose it. It's, it's mine. It's me. I made the mess. I'm going to clean the mess. Um, this old old guy he was probably uh, 75 years old and he was a mentor to me he owned a, a contracting business and Keith when I say I, I sold way too many lawns I mean I was I, I I decided as a solo guy I wanted to cut everywhere and anything and I sold all these lawns and I'm I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off it rained for two days I'm swamped I'm working 12 hours my wife's mad everyone's mad the customers are mad. I'm mad. Wife's mad. Everyone's mad. And then we had a Wednesday night service, and I couldn't make it. Wednesday night church service, and I couldn't make it because I was out cutting till dark. And I came home, and I talked to that guy. I called him on the phone, and he said, I, I started complaining right away. I said, you don't understand, Jim. I I this everything's going wrong. I'm so busy. I, I can't stand this. I, I, what, what am I going to do? You've been in business. He said, get up out of your chair right now. I said, okay. I got up out of my chair. He said, go outside. I said, Jim, it's 10 o'clock at night. He said, go outside. So I go outside. I said, look at your truck. I said, what am I looking at? It's pitch dark. I'm in my skivvies. I'm like, what? He said, what's the name on the side of the truck? I said, it's my name. He goes, fix it. You created it, you fix it. And ever since then, I, I, just, I went through and I dropped all the customers I needed to drop. And I decided, I decided that I was gonna work a certain amount of hours and I was going to live a certain way with financial freedom, be financially free as a solo, as a business owner. It's the best thing I could tell you to do. Um, and just, you decide. You decide what you want to do. Proper planning prevents poor, poor performance. So I got a little book, little book. It's a planner. It gives me all the days, all the hours in a day. Everything's in there. And I look at that. And I took, take a look at the job list. I decide how many hours I want to work. Okay, I'm going to work 10 hours today. And then I put the jobs in there. I did that. I decided to do that. I don't let the I don't let this business control me. I control it. It's my business. And if you don't, if you don't get get a grip on it, it will cause you. I mean, I've had mental breakdowns every year. Two thousand nine, big mental breakdown. Work you two, said? Did you say every year? No, I said two thousand nine. Oh, I must have heard every year because it's every year for me. No, I I, I since two thousand nine, I've really just really controlled it. I, I really do. I mean, obviously, I think a big key to this is we call it the spring rush. I call it the spring rush trap. But the spring rush, basically, it, it's known from April 1st to about July 1st, July 4th. It's called it's the 100, on, 100 days of hell. The 100 yeah, days it's, of hell. It's, it's on and popping. And, and I think, you know, I have a family meeting. I had a family meeting a couple of weeks ago. I was like, listen, this is daddy's time. So you you know, let's let's decide what's important because the next three months we got to get it in here because that's 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 the key. You're starting the year off April first, July fourth. 
everyone everyone wants everything. First round, second round of fertilizer. They all want their mulch done. They all want their grass cut every single week. It, it's it's a lot to do. But I think there has to be some compromise with you and your spouse and your family also. You know, you got to sit and compromise and be on the same page definitely financially. You have to be on the same page financially. You got to if you're solo, you can only make so much. There, there's a lid to there. So if you're going to live financially free, you're going to have to make some adjustments to the way you live. Maybe the house you have is not a 5,000 square foot house. Maybe you're not driving BMWs. If that's your thing, that's fine. But there's some compromises that you have to make because there's only so much money you make. But, you know, I want to be able to, if I want to go out to eat right now, if I want to go on vacation right now, if if I want to go shopping right now, if I want to buy, I, I don't want to have to look at my bank account and go, oh my God, am I going to make it? Can we afford food tomorrow? That No, no, those those years are gone. So that's the goal is financial freedom in whatever area, whether you're solo, whether you're solo, you have two trucks going out, whether you have a conglomerate where you have 10 trucks going out, uh, being financially free and definitely telling your schedule what you're going to do is is huge for me. Bro, you just hit a hot button. I've never, ever told this story because I've been embarrassed and I'll make it quick. This is what changed everything for me. I'm dead serious right now. And I hope the right people are listening to this. It wasn't last summer for sure, but it was the summer before that. Just I spread myself so thin and I was putting so much pressure on myself to be successful that I was beating myself into just working at a whole new level and listening to motivational stuff. And, and yeah. I was spread so thin. So I, I, one morning, uh, I hadn't gotten out of the field yet at that point too. So I'm still like running the crew and the guys and doing the sales and marketing plus running an internet business, plus all the stuff going on way too much going on. And I, I'm up in the morning, I'm like shaking, trying to get out the door and I'm, I'm late. Didn't get any sleep. Dog was throwing up all night. So on three to four nights in a row. And Ooh. so I was on edge because we have like a sick dog. But anyways, it, it, I went and my wife was trying to like ask me a question about something else important. I was like, I, I can't talk. I gotta. And then all of a sudden I got this pain in my chest and it was it felt like my heart was in a vice, man. Could have been a panic attack. Could have been almost a heart attack. I don't know. But it was so intense that I tried to ignore it and force through it. Mm -mm. Dude, it brought me down to my knee on the kitchen floor in front of my wife. And I was about to say, call 911. Mm. And, then it, and then I tried to get up and run out the door. And it brought me all the way down to laying on the floor. And I was holding my heart like, like this. And like uh, I, I don't know if I was scared or not, but I was on the verge of saying, call 911. And then I was like, okay, just breathe. It's just a panic attack. Get up. I went to get up and go out the door again. Like, I know, bitch, bro. That's that's what I would tell myself. Anytime I, I wasn't performing at a high level, I would just beat myself up and call myself a little bitch and say, just do it anyways. And I went to get up and go out the door again. Broom. It came back and it brought me all the way down. And I was laying on my kitchen floor and I was out like, and the feeling that had came over me is like, if you don't change, you are going to have a heart attack before you're 40. And, uh, <laughs> So what, whatever that was, this so so here's what it is. Here's the lesson that this thing happened where I realizing I realized a hundred percent. I've I've been a different man since that. If you're putting your personal health at risk, like your yourself at risk, nothing else matters if you don't have your health and if you're gonna literally have a heart attack or a stroke because you're trying so hard. It wasn't even worth it because I realized I can't be a hundred places at once. And I, something changed in my brain and it took that traumatic, painful experience. Like some people have NDEs and near death experiences or a traumatic car accident or something. That was one of a few things I actually almost died that year too, up in a tree. I won't even, I almost got electrocuted. I'll tell that a different, really stupid. Um, and and it, any, it could have happened to anybody too is what happened. But anyways, those couple of events had literally changed my life. And since then, both of my businesses has, have gone up. I've made more money, more, more, uh, more profit in one business. But I'm way happier and way healthier. I feel amazing. But it took that traumatic experience. And I don't want people to go through that. So 
That's what your I'm perspective story. changed. If you are looking for the greatest software ever to run your business on, go to getjobber.com forward slash Keith. You can create proposals, invoices, collect payments, and track your entire business directly on the Jobber smartphone app. If you want to get a totally free trial of Jobber right now, open your browser, type in getjobber.com forward slash Keith. And after the trial, if you decide to sign up with Keith's link, you'll automatically get 20% off your first six months. So what are you waiting for? Go to getjobber.com forward slash Keith. The way that you saw it changed. Your perspective change, meaning, so if I told you, could you raise $5,000 right now? And you're like, no, nah, that's a lot of money. I don't think so. But if I said you only had six months to raise $5,000 for your kid would need this medicine that would cost $5,000 and you only have six months to do it, your perspective changes real quick. You'd find a way to raise the $5,000. You would do whatever it took. Your perspective mm -hmm. changed. Everything changes. And, and those those life moments happen probably once every decade. I'm 49 years old, and I could tell you I had one in my 20s, I have one in my 30s, and I've had one in my 40s, and it changes your perspective. And those are really key to, to your business, growing your business. But your priorities with your family, to me, is 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 key. So it, it, tell us the thing. We were on the phone a few weeks ago, and you told me this whole epic story about how you uh, – a, a basketball tournament, you guys won. Wait, I got to get a water. I just ran out of my water because it's a good one. <laughs> he ran out of water. So as some of you know, um, in the off season, in the winter season, when I'm not plowing snow, I'm a basketball coach at a local high school here. And my daughters both play. And, you know, we've been, we've been going, at, going at this for about eight years. And so this year, uh, we had a really good team and we ended up winning a championship. We ended up winning a state title. Uh, just a phenomenal thing uh, to go through with your kids. In fact, I'm going to show you some pictures here. This is, this is a picture that was put in the paper of me hugging my two daughters after a, a, a championship. And uh, one of the local papers caught that image. It's just so awesome. Were and you guys like crying? Yeah. Dude, that's epic. Here's the official paper. You're like the best dad ever. Wow. That's amazing. Yep. Here's that's the paper. That's so amazing. <laughs> All, all the people watching right now are like, my dad never did none of that shit with me. Here's the two medals. Here's the state medal. Wow. State. What state? Pennsylvania. And here is the, this is, this is called the WPIL. This is, this, we won our, 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 our half of the state, which is six and seven, which is hard to do. But then we won the main, the big one. Is you that's won it. Yeah, it was it was an awesome experience. Whole family involved. I mean, it was a great, it was great, you know, to work. My my oldest is a senior now, and she's gonna go off to college and, and she finished off her senior year uh as a state champion. My youngest is in 10th grade. And so we have another two years with her. So, but you know, this business does allow you when you tell your time. It does allow you to, to, when you prioritize, to do stuff like that. You know, I was able to coach the, I've been coaching my girls since they were in fourth grade, Keith. You, so what are you do you, like, you literally go to work and go straight to coaching after work? Or do you, do you build in enough time to, you know, go home and take a shower real quick and eat and then go do it? Like, are you constantly running? How, like, that's, this is epic. Well, coaching, you know, for winter, coaching in the winter, um, so you're off. But mm -hmm. it starts, we start our season about October. So I'll just cut the day short at 2 o'clock, come home, get a shower, go to basketball practice at 3, get done around 5.30ish. And sometimes I'll just go and grab the trailer and go again. Or sometimes I'll just call it a night. Just depends on what we're doing, you know, stuff like that. But again, tell your time. Everything, proper planning prevents poor performance. So when you know 
you have something like this. The only thing, snow can be a little tricky. Luckily, we were in a snow event where, you know, by the time I got off the bus, sometimes we would play in Pittsburgh. So we travel an hour back and then I'd get off the bus. I would jump in the plow truck, go do what I had to do, come home. And then, but, but winter time I'm off like this winter, we only had two plowing events. So I was off all winter. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was a great, I mean, this was, this was probably, it ranks up there in the top five moments of my life for sure. 100%. Congratulations, man. Yeah. It's amazing. Yep. Good for you. And now uh, I said, Johnny Moe's a believer. Tell us, tell us some about that dog. Well, I mean, you know, out of everything in life, I think, you know, having a relationship with Jesus Christ is probably the most important. Um, it's not probably, it is. Um, I wore the shirt. <laughs> I actually, uh, actually preached a message this weekend on Sunday. I preached a message called Duty. Um, Wait, you preached a message? Called? How were you preaching a message? Where? I preached at my church. I preached, I probably preached probably five, six times a year at my church. Probably, maybe a little more. I'm not sure. Maybe five, six times. I love it. And what was the message? Duty. Duty. Mm -hmm. um, take your notes. responsibility as a Christian. <laughs> Duty. Ecclesiastes chapter, I believe it's chapter 12, verse 13, talks about the whole duty of man. Here. Let me hear the whole conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for that is the whole duty of man. And I broke that word duty down basically um, talking about Christian disciplines of going to church, reading your Bible daily, praying, um, you know, praying when it's tough, praying when it's, or reading your word when you don't feel like it, reading your word, going to church when you don't want to, making church a priori priority. Um, since COVID started, you know, it's easy just to check online and, you know, watch your service online. But, you know, I, I believe that, you know, it's your responsibility as a Christian believer to go to church as much as you possibly can. I love but, that, man. So it's the whole duty of man. And I just did a whole message about, you know, doing your Christian disciplines, even when you don't feel like it, even when, uh, okay. even it's your duty, it's your duty, it's your it's responsibility. Your duty. responsibility. If you're only going to serve God when it feels good, you're only going to serve God when it's convenient. It's you're, you're to me. You're just not much of a Christian. You're, You'd be you're, a lukewarm Christian, right? Well, you're lukewarm, but Jesus you know. said, "If you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out of my mouth." Yes, he, he did said, say that. He also said, uh, "If you uh, did, he'd not rather eat. you be cold or hot, but yeah. if you're lukewarm." But I think I think the responsibility of Christians today is is everyone wants to do what's easy. Everyone wants to do what feels good. And they only want to serve God when it's, when it's in their parameters. But I believe if you're going to be a strong believer, you're going to do it. You're going to, it's your duty. Even when you're not scared or on your deathbed or with a terminal illness it's or absolutely. in grave danger. <laughs> and, and that's how I became. That's how I became a Christian is because I had a situation when I was 21 with, with a heart condition. And that's when I came to know the Lord. And I told him if he ever got me, if he got me out of this situation, I was in a hospital. I, I did one of those, one of those, you know, hey, if you get me out of this one, God, I'll serve you for the rest of my life. Yeah. And uh, sure enough, he did. And, and I've kept my promise, you know, since 1996. I'm a faithful servant. Uh, I haven't fallen away. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of that, you know. I believe church, I believe you should have a good church home. Everybody needs a pastor. Uh, everyone needs a, a, a group of believers that they can surround themselves with to strengthen themselves and a pastor to, you know, to guide you through life. And um, I started my business because my pastor said, hey, Joan, I think it might be time for you to do a business. I'm kind of a, kind of a hybrid. I own my own business. I mentor businessmen here and I mentor people in the church and their finances so they call me a priest and a king so I'm, uh, i i can preach but i'm also in the the world system uh i've crossed over into that that multi king and priest thing it's pretty multi-dimensional you know you work in the marketplace you present yourself oh. in the marketplace and you also are in the church wow 
Dude, you're giving me an epiphany right now. Yes. I believe there's seven mountains. A seven mountain theory. Se- uh, wait, seven mountain theory? Yeah. Tell us the seven mountains. Let's go. Well, <laughs> he's over here taking notes. Uh, I believe that there's seven areas of that the church has neglected. The church has basically went into the church and made the church the four walls. And they've neglected seven mountains that could impact the world. One is media. Um, Another is business. Politics. um, Arts and entertainment. And there's, there's three more, but it's not coming to me off the top of my head. But those areas, um, I believe everyone is called to an area. And I believe that they can rise to the top of that mountain and have influence in that mountain and bring a godly perspective with Christian integrity into those areas. Ooh, like, you said so- a godly perspective with Christian integrity into those areas. Like take education. Take See, education. I want to say one thing real quick. People come on the podcast. This, I'm dead serious about this podcast, and we're, we're dropping fire on this podcast. The first, like, two, three minutes of a podcast, we're just getting warmed up. And some people might tune and be like, what are these listening to these guys? Well, they're not going to talk about them and none. This. And then, like, if you just hang around for a few minutes and all this this gold, you got to invest a little bit of time, bro. All right, keep, I'm sorry. Say it again. The integrity. So. So say it again. I was writing it down. I interrupted my dang self. Come on. <laughs> so taking Christian principles with 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 integrity, Christian integrity, going to these mountains. Education is a mountain. Take take a, a Christian who would take the teachings that he's learned in his church and from the Bible and stepped into the mountain of education. And think how they could take that mountain over and, and start to really teach and, and mold the minds of a youth. Instead, instead, the world has taken that mountain, and now they are molding the minds of our youth. So when my kids come home, they'll say, so-and-so taught me this, Dad. So-and-so taught me this. And I'll say, okay, this is what I think. This is, you know, this is what, how you should present it. And, You know, imagine a politician who was a Christian, who had ethics, who had integrity, Mm -hmm. and was anointed by God to do it, first of all, the Mm -hmm. anointing of God. King David, he was not a priest. David was a king. He was not a priest. He was not a, he was not like a, a minister. He wasn't a pastor. David was a king. And because he was anointed by God to do it, and he walked in those callings with it, it says it says that David was a man after God's own heart. Mm. So he led. He, he's considered to be one of the greatest kings in the Bible. So that's a mountain. What if a president? What if we had a president who wasn't jacked up, was actually kingdom minded? What if we had a president? who was godly and actually believed in the Bible and, and ran our country in a man. Sorry. Man, I built a $65,000 studio. We just had new made neighbors moving next door and their kids are out back. We, I'm sorry. My neighbor before had a hundred foot tree, like could have fallen and we got it cut down. There's a tree stump. And they're probably on the tree stump going, ah! <laughs> Let them have So I got to put some soundproofing on the walls. I'm not mad or anything. I just can't, I hope everybody can't hear it. <laughs> All right, keep going. But that's, that's the, the basis of the seven mountain theory, that there's seven mountains in culture that Christians should overtake. I don't think everyone is called to be a pastor in a church. Not everyone's called to be a deacon. Not everyone's called to be an usher or a greeter. But there, there are ministries outside the church. We call it marketplace ministers, and and that marketplace ministers. Wait, yes. what is a marketplace minister? It's someone like me. You know, I'm not a true pastor. I am not uh, uh, called to the fivefold ministry. 
But what the I do The five-fold... Do... Knock my headphones off. The five-fold minist- ministry? Yes. Is... What is this? Well, that's a pastor, a teacher, a prophet, evangelist, and apostle. Wait! <laughs> Wait, a pastor? Okay, what is it? A pastor? Yeah. A teacher? A teacher? A prophet? A prophet? Evangelist? Evangelist? An apostle. An those apostle? Are the five major, those are the five major uh, things for the church. So you have a pastor of your church. You can also have a teacher. You have a prophet is someone who comes in and prophesies. They point the way to the Lord. He's the finger. He's the pointer. You have the apostle. I got to stand for this one. <laughs> Wait a second, man. We got to do a... Keep going. I'm sorry. I need to just shut up and let you talk. Okay. Keep going. Sorry. So, and basically, I'm not in those five-fold ministries. So, not everyone that comes into the church is called to the church. They are called. Everyone's called to be part of a church. Okay? You, it, you're called to be a part of a church. But your calling, what God's actually called you to do, is to minister in the marketplace, minister outside the church. The fivefold gift is for inside the church. The people in the church then take the training that the fivefold ministers have given you, and you go outside into the world, and you operate through God's kingdom in the world. Where are you getting all this from, man? My goosebumps, dude. I'm literally, this is amazing. Huh? (laughs) I didn't know this was going to be about church, but. This is where I have in church right now, folks. Let's go. But Mm -hmm. yeah, I I truly believe that I'm a marketplace minister. I I touch people in the basketball world as a coach. I touch people. um, You'll never hear me cuss. I don't swear. Um, It's always, if if I mess up, I fess up. You know, it's if one I of my mess things. Up, I fess up. Yep. If I if I mess up and I do something wrong, I go to the person. I say, "Hey, listen, I messed up. I should have said that. I shouldn't have did that. I mess up. I fess up. Then I get up." Looking to maximize your production in the field? Ballard Products has over 300 products that can help you get the most out of your efforts every day. Ballard Products. Whether you are looking to get a better cut, keep your gear on your machine, keep your expensive equipment clean and safe, or just get the most out of your machines, Ballard has you covered. Ballard Products. Jump onto our easy-to-use updated website at ballard-inc.com to get your gear ordered today. Keep grinding, grinding, stay stay safe, safe. and have a great season. Ballard. Make sure to use the code KEITH10 to save 10% on our full line of gear. That's KEITH10. Wait, wait. I mess up, I fess up, I get up? Yep, I mess up, I fess up, then I get up. I don't dwell on it. I messed up, I fessed up, I'm not dwelling on it. I'm moving on. Had a bad day? It's a, it's just a day. Everybody can put in the comments, if I mess up, I fess up. Put that in the comments. <laughs> smash the heart and the thumbs up 20 times. Let's go. <laughs> How can uh, I want to get to some of the comments, actually speaking of comments. I got Dan Smith on here saying, Johnny Mo. Hey. What's right. going on, guys? All right. So I like to have my my uh my guests read if if you can see the screen clearly, some of the comments. Um <clears throat> I don't see any comments. Okay, there we go. What's good, gentlemen? Good evening. From who? Say their name. Austin Douglas. Hi, Austin. From Ditch the Itch. Next. We got uh much much love hope all is well yet lord these really small so it's hard for me to see it Let i wonder if i can it. make it bigger uh the uh that didn't help i always said prior proper performance stephen wonderboy thompson okay i always said proper planning for first floor yes that's yeah, a lot bigger like that yeah i like that resolve right, eat lord all right, let's yeah, go. Yeah, it's my it's one of my five sayings. I, I live by five sayings. That's that's definitely one of them. Prop that's why it's on my wall. I have another one. It's right here. 
It says, if you want something you never had, you must do something you've ever done. Ooh, I have another one that says, don't let my confidence. Uh, what's this one say? Tremendous, gigantic facts. Thank you. Thank you. Ray Ray, a lot of stress in the grind. Absolutely, my man. There is a lot of stress in the grind. Remember, one day at a time. This day is going to end at some point. This day is going to end. I can feel this so much right now. We are expecting our second child during the heat of the season this year. I'm actively communicating to my technicians that during this time, he will have to step up. Austin Douglas. Yeah, my, I had my first daughter uh, June 3rd. I actually was cutting grass and I ended up going back to the hospital. And, you know, that was very challenging. Uh, know that you are going to lose sleep. And you want to be there for as much as your wife, especially for that first six weeks. Um, you want to take some of those night shifts. So make sure that uh, you plan in, a, in advance because you are gonna, you're going to be so adrenalized. Your first three nights, you're not even going to know that you're tired. You're just going to be like, living, every time the baby goes, eh, you're going to jump right up. And you're not even going to know it. And then all of a sudden, you're going to go, boom. It's like someone's going to slap you in the face. You're going to drop. You're just going to drop. But uh, plan in advance, you will lose sleep and try to sleep more before that three weeks happens. Try to sleep more. I did that on my, on my second one. My first one, I was a wreck. <laughs> There's a definitely happy meeting. The longer I'm in business, the better time manager I've become. Ray Ray's longer. Ray Ray. Yeah, I right. mean, it's. You know, you know how much you can do, and you know when you start to overload, and then you can once you feel the overload, you just say, "Hey, that's enough. Cut the cut the sales off, and take take the people that are causing you to be feel overwhelmed, and, and get rid of them." Love it. And then we got um, <clears throat> Joey Joey Biden says, "Keith, I love your channel. Unfortunately, I don't ever have much time to tune into these live videos." It's so much cooler watching you because we're in the same area too. What's up, bro? Yeah, and if you don't get a chance to tune in here live, Untrap Podcast on Apple and Spotify. Go check it out or any podcast platform. We'll see over there. We're now dropping two shows per week, every Monday and every Thursday. If you're also if you're on my email list at Keith Kelfis, you're getting an email from me with all the show notes as well directing you to apple and spotify mondays and thursdays we're up to two shows a week now we did normally do just one mondays but yeah tune in to the untrapped podcast you're killing it yeah dog ray ray it's all about your time that's what we said sell the older i get the more valuable my time is and becoming master of my time is critical to life success you know if i could he he hinted at something if i could go back 20 years the one thing I would tell myself is I would raise my prices. I would definitely, definitely charge more for everything you did. I, I know that sounds counterproductive because you're just getting into business, but I would make yourself a luxury. Remember, the time is the one thing you can never get back. You cannot get it back. It, it's such a precious commodity. So you're selling time for money. No matter how you do this or who you work for, you're selling your time for, your, for money. If you own your own business or you work for someone. So you want to get as much value for your time as because you have to honor your time. Because once the time runs out, you're not going to sit on your deathbed and say, man, I really wish I would have worked another day. I really wish I would have worked a couple more hours. You're going to be talking about all the great times you had when you won a state title with your kids and, and you got to be in the biggest paper in Pennsylvania hugging your two kids. You know, those are going to things that you're going to remember. You're not going to remember cutting grass. And Mrs. So-and-so who's yelling at you because you forgot to do the weed whip around the corner. You missed my tree in the back, Johnny. You missed it. She's, you're not even going to think about her. So just drop her now because she's not paying enough and, and move on. And Johnny, can you come and cut it every other week and cut it shorter? No. Why? Because my time's worth something. Don't take those bi-weeklies. They're just a pain in the butt. Go ahead, Keith. Dude, no, I just dropped a customer last week. It's actually one of our longtime clients because I narrowed our service area. It's uh, 
it's just outside of our six mile radius. And we do their property maintenance, everything. We do their mulch, but they have red mulch and they love their red mulch. And I hate red mulch and the, the little particles. Are red. It just takes so much longer to, to clean it. And I had to, I raised their price and I just dread doing this, this one specific property. I, I can't say why. I just don't like the property. I, the people are great. And I, I dropped them just because I did not like that specific uh, property and that, and that I, I can't even explain it. Cause from the outside, it sounds like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? If they're paying on time and everything, it's like, because I'm running my business on my terms. And um, yeah, I like that. I'm only doing jobs that I like that I want to do for the profit margins. But, you know, I paid my dues over a long period of time to get to that point in the beginning the first few years, you got to take everything that you can get. And you talk about raising your prices. Yes. You talk about managing your time and not running around like a chick with your head cut off. True. Providing that you have the money to afford you the time and proper planning. Like if, if we do a landscape job, let's so like say eight, 10, 12, 15, 20,000, whatever it is, let's say we do a $16,000 landscape job and I bake in on automatic 50% gross profit margin, or I can't take on the job. And then I know exactly how it's long, it's long it's going to take me. I've also built into the plan into the budget that I need this much time to plan and I'm charging for that. Um, and also time for getting all the materials on the job site, even the amount of time at the end of the job it takes to do a full proper cleanup and walk around detail property walk with the customer, the time for all the deposits and money collection. Like everything is all baked into that, still including a 50% gross profit margin because the money is there, the money affords you the time. If you made $150,000 a year and you, you only had to work 10 hours a week, you'd have all the time in the world because you made 150 grand a work in 10 hours a week. But if you made only 20 grand a year working 70 hours a week, you wouldn't, you'd, you'd be, you'd be frantic. So it's like, I, it's this weird thing that money is like oxygen and money totally controls the equation. If there is not enough oxygen, you're going to be gasping while somebody else has like abundant oxygen. They're like, why are you gasping for air? Well, look, you're an idiot. So stupid running around gasping for air all the time. What an air. And then if, but if you, if you switch shoes with that person, they'd be gasping for air too. And they'd be <laughs> laughing at you, laughing at each other. Well, not at each other. The guy would be laughing like, because now you're in his shoes. But here's the thing. When you change the way, the way you see things, the things that you see literally change. And it's like going through, it's like putting your hand on a hot stove and it burns the hell out of you. you like running around. I'm just on a quick rant here Yeah. Um, for your customers, because when I have people on the podcast that have been through stuff and they've come to these conclusions, then they'll speak it from the end result. I'm obsessed with the emotional, the, the breakdown. Sometimes you got to have a breakdown in order to have a breakthrough. So you have the breakdown that it gives you the breakthrough. And then this wall goes up, which is don't put your hand on that hot stove anymore, which means that like, even if you feel like you need the money, don't buckle and say yes to a customer to do something that, or if, if you can't get the money that you need to make to do the job. So it becomes like these stop losses or these things where I don't care how much pain I'm in. I'm not doing that. But then when you switch your, the reciprocal of that, it's like you have a scarcity mindset and then you have an abundant mindset. When you realize that it's, we're actually in an abundant universe, God feeds the birds and the, the trees yes. and bees and all this stuff. Yes. Like, there's so much work out there. Yes. And if you could just pull yourself, your, your, um, there's a saying, a guy is frantically mopping all the water all over the floor with a mop. And he's like having a panic attack mopping. And somebody else comes up and notices that like the sink is just clogged and that's overflowing all over the floor. He's like, bro, why don't you just turn off the water and unclog the sink? Like, what are you, he's like, are you kidding me? I'm too busy mopping up all this water. So. It's like this, it's a stress reactive state that comes from some trauma or some negative thing that happened or like, I, I'm, I'm the dude for, I went through all this crazy stuff and it was about getting around successful people and hearing stories and listening to podcasts like this, that just forced me to pull my head up out of the sand little by little. And every time it was like a spring loaded thing, every time I would like tune out of other people like, like this my head would go right back into the sand and i'd go into this reactive state in, in my business i was suffering and because you have all of the evidence around you that tells you you can't get the money that you need for these jobs and the competition and blah blah, blah. like if the customers won't 
and it was like uh water seeks its own level it's so weird when you upgrade your identity and you upgrade your worth and you feel worthy it's like imagine if a, a customer is like uh, okay i want all these things done give me a quote how much it's going to cost you're gonna be like well normally it's like 700 but i'll do it for like 500 and then the customers but the same i've watched these same exact i don't know where all this is coming from Just let me finish i've watched same exact customers that i was upset because they would reject my quote for like a grand to do their whole property plus mulch and all this stuff with like $2,000 job for a grand. They'd say no, and I'd be beating myself up. And then the same customer that same day, they go get a brand new BMW and they have a grand piano and they're getting a $40,000 patio installed in a $27,000 jacuzzi. Now they're going to Hawaii. Now they're getting a big screen TV and they're just blowing money like crazy. Yet they can't even afford my stupid thousand dollar mulch job oh my god what is wrong with me? and i'm stupid i'm stupid but now i'm just like well yeah you want this this done yeah it'll be about 2200 bucks when you want it done and it's just like and they're just like oh yeah as soon as possible and i'm like so what change what's going on here do i have control of the etheric universe because i just so something weird is happening i can't put my hand on it but my my finger on it what is the difference that allows you to manage your time i think it's you i think this whole thing of uh the when you change the way you see things the things you see literally change there's some quantum interstellar stuff going on here when you upgrade your identity everything changes that was a rant that came out of nowhere all right next comment that's awesome (laughs) i I tell you the book i read it really helped me when my time was tell your time Tell that, your time. Tell your time. And it, it really, you know, when you put a calendar in front of you and, and you start to input the stuff into that calendar that you need to get done and you started putting hour by hour, that's really what started to really just blow my mind. Like, okay, I'm just unrealistic on what I can get done, how I can get done. And obviously, as you mature, you know, I, I did a, a fertilizing estimate. For a guy, he, I measured his lawn out, and, and I already knew that he was he, he was cheap. Basically, he was just a cheap guy. So I gave him an estimate of two hundred twenty dollars fertilize his lawn, and he looked at it. Oh no, no! Oh my goodness! He dropped the estimate, and I'm sitting there, I'm looking at him, and there's a Porsche right here. We're in his garage. There's a Porsche right to my right here, and he's like, "If you can do it for one hundred fifty, you can have it." I said, like, "No, nah, it's not going to work." And, and, you know, during the conversation, we were having small talk and he was talking about, you know, when I go out to eat, you know, it's just been so expensive, you know, you know, I, I, I like to have a, a glass of wine or two at dinner and, you know, that's like nine bucks for a glass. So it's $18 and my wife likes to have a couple glasses, you know, we're spending over a hundred bucks. And I said, Mr. So-and-so, I said, we were just sitting here talking and you're drinking $9 wine and you're telling me. That for two hundred and twenty dollars to get your lawn fertilized, sprayed the weeds, get it the way you want, it's too much. And he's like, and he's spending thirty six extra dollars every single time he goes yeah, out to eat and, just and for I'm wine. Like, and he's like, I said, you're you're spending nine dollars on a glass of wine, and you're beating me up for a hundred bucks here. He's like, you're right, Johnny. Go ahead, do the job. But when I was young. I would have probably. You should have got this. No, you're choosing your wine over me, is what you're doing. Yeah. Let's get all when schizophrenic when younger, on him. All right, all right, bit. take it. I'll pay you double. If, when I was younger, if I did that bid, I would probably try to find a way to do it for 150 bucks. Yeah. But, you know, but as you get, as you know, you're worth, you're worth something. And when you put a calendar in front of you and you start putting the priorities, what is your priority list? Priorities over here. What is the most important thing on that priority list? God first, wife, kids work, church, hobbies. That's the priority list. And once you get those priorities aligned... And, but wait, where do you come in? What's that? Where oh, I'm do you come one. in on the priority list? With the God list. I'm up there with the God. Really? So God, God, yeah. wife, kids, work, church, hobbies. Wait a second. So you 
Is this a trick? What do you mean? Is it a trick? I don't think you. I don't think you can be a healthy individual without putting yourself first. Meaning, spending time with God, doing those things, spending time with God, reading the Word, uh, going to church. I, oh, I follow me as I follow Christ. What's that? Yeah. Follow me. Yeah. Oh, follow me as I follow. Yeah. Divine order. Paul. This is not secular order. Yeah, but I mean, but some people, you know, some people will go to the last, which is hobbies. And that's basically putting yourself first there. They'll take all their hobbies and what makes them feel happy and whatever they feel like. And then they live through the last one is their hobby. It's all about me. It's all about me. It's all about me. And you're not going to live a very successful life. You're not going to be married too long either. So I believe God, wife, kids. Love it. All right. Next comment, Kurt Bryant. Two days behind, 12 voicemails with more long cut quotes and long things start small this week has been a mess and it's most certainly my fault ah you got the long you got the spring rush trap <laughs> yes you sold more work than you can possibly do and and this is what happens when you're in a spring rush trap so you're in march the phone's ringing you're in april the phone's ringing yes i can do that yes i can do that yes i can do that well now it's time to do it and now you're you're in that crunch, and now you're like, I gotta find a way to do all this work. So you end up, I'm gonna buy the bigger mower, I'm gonna hire five guys, I'm gonna do this, and all of a sudden you waste your whole year jacked up because you got caught in the spring rush trap. You bought stuff you shouldn't have bought, you hired people that you shouldn't have hired, and now you're in the spring rush trap. So what do you do now that you're in it? Take a deep breath. And you say, literally, you, you take your book of work, you take the book of work and you really look at it and you start to put it on a calendar. And I mean this, if, if you're not planning, if, you're, uh, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Put all your work on a calendar and be realistic about it. You're looking at it. Now you know what you're doing, when you're doing, how you're doing it. And so now you have these times, these little time things. Okay. Uh, I can do this mulching at this date. What if it rains? Well, then I could push it to this date. If you booked your whole year and you're still booking, that is on you. We just say, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. And then we run like a chicken with our head cut off and we try to get it all done. And by the end of the year, there's some things that fall through the crack. And basically, probably the number one thing that falls through the crack is, is and we didn't mention it, Keith did, is your health. Number one, your health. You know, we're talking about marriage and everything, and that's important, but honestly, your health is important too. By the end of the year, I'm 49 years old. My knees hurt. My back hurts. I take blood pressure medicine. You know, these things are coming to you. If you don't take care of yourself younger, I promise you when you're 50, you're not going to step out of a truck the same. You're not going to want to sit on a mower that's bouncing around like this all day or riding on a stand-on mower with your knees. My knees would swell up this big when I get on a mower. By the end of the day, your knees are this big. So these things are coming to you if you don't take care of yourself. And all you do is you run and you try to please everyone. And in the end, those people, I, I mean this sincerely, they really don't care. If you called them today and you said, hey, I just can't do this anymore. Well, they would say this, thank you, you did great work. And then when you go by their house next week, it would be mulched, it would be cut, and they would move on. And the only person that really cares is you. It's so true. I've, I've had to, uh, I've lost a lot of customers, had to drop them. I've raised prices, raised my worth. And I've actually gone out of my way to explain to the customers why. I'm like, listen, we're fully licensed and insured, blah, blah, blah. Like the expense have gone through the roof. And, I, and I've even gotten personal just to actually tell them why we have to raise the prices to make this work. And it's like, well, I just can't pay that. And um, I totally get it for some customers. But some even raising the price a little bit. I've had customers just have a conniption on me and be like, well, who's going to, who am I going to find? Who, who am I? Who, me, me. Like they go into this whole thing like, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm being mean right now because <laughs> I've had some customers freak out because they never actually cared about me at all. They just care. And that's fine. I mean, you're in the service business. 
I talked about this a little bit on Facebook before, and it's gotten literally videos with 800,000 million, 2 million, and 3 million views of me ranting about this stuff. Yeah. And, and, but it hits mainstream America instead of like lawn and landscapers and all these people who are like, you know, potential customers and like, you know, soccer moms in middle America, they come in and like, why is this guy complaining about running a business? He needs to do something. He's whining. They're like, you should be happier. Everything in the book just, just all. And I was like, oh, you want to get some viral videos? You see what happens. But it's like, the point is, they don't care about you. And as soon as you get that through your thick skull, you can run a business with a smile and you put on that hat and you actually care for real. But like, you ain't about to like ruin your health over it, man. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, it's easy to get caught in a trap though. Cause you, you have goals. You want to do better than last year. You, you know, it, it, it happens. I, I got, I'm, I'm busy right now. I, I'm swamped. I mean, five minutes before I got on here, I just jumped out of the shower. I was cutting grass. I literally, we got a big rainstorm coming in for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday is what it says. So I'm trying to get all my mowing done by tomorrow evening. So obviously there are those things. There are, there are weeks where you have to say, you know what? I got round one still done. I, I still got to do my round one fertilizings, but this week mowing has to take priority right now because I got to get them done. And you ha- you're going to have weeks where it's going to rain, where it's where things just aren't going to go good. Your truck's going to break down, and it, it's just part of life. It, it's just part of and, and again, proper planning prevents poor performance. Listen, the truck breaks down, you saved up for it. Go get it fixed. Take a deep breath, and and get back to work the next day. Honestly, it it, it it's not that big of a deal. But it it looks like a massive deal when it's sitting in front of your face, but it's really in the grand scheme of things. If you could really look at it, I mean, I've, I've been in this business since 1996. I've been cutting grass, fertilizing, mulching, pruning, grinding since 1996. I I get the business. If if I could, you know, I didn't have this. I didn't have someone teach me landscaping like Keith does. I didn't have someone to teach you how to do window washing. You you went work for a company and then you started your own business and you did you, YouTube is phenomenal. You can learn anything. And if you could just, you know, learn to prioritize your time to to realize you're not Superman. You only have so much time in the day. Jill's office provides friendly professional receptionists for small business owners just like you. We can help answer your calls, and we can even schedule estimates and jobs for you. Try Jill's office today and get a $25 discount when you say Untrapped. Just go to jillsoffice.com. Be reasonable with it. You know, put your work on paper, on a calendar, on a whiteboard, and look at it and say, okay, I got this job. It's going to take me seven hours. So where on that calendar am I getting seven hours? Or I got 50 mowing jobs to do this week. So Monday, I got to do this, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Put it all on there. That's the best advice I could give you. And, and charge what you're worth. Find out what you need to make. Everyone's different. Some people need to make $30 an hour. Some people need to make $180 an hour. Live somewhere in between. Do you. Just do you. But be consistent. Know what you need to make. If you need to make $80 an hour and you're only making $75, it's not going to be too long before you find out by the end of the year you're in trouble. Say, listen to everything he just said. You've been through it and you know. I love this. I want to get to a couple more comments before we wrap this up. Make sure that we can get your comments in. Johnny Cox, two years and it's just grass LLC. Good advice. Thanks, both of y'all. Read the book. Cool. Yeah. Kurt Bryant, my business is controlling me a bit right now. I made it through the morning panic attack. Today and tomorrow will be better. I decide that some things can be pushed up in the schedule you know i i know what that feels like to to have that business just so into you you know and it's it's always so consuming Uh, just take a deep breath and and call your customers and and let them know what's going on say just do this call your customers say listen i'm backed up right now and i really want to get to your work i'm excited to do this work and let them know what's going on don't 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 let them think, is he coming? Is he not coming? 
just be commutative with your customers and, and you will see things will iron itself out. You know how you call them? If you're, if you're, well, a solopreneur, you got a tiny, was, you just get a big astronaut headset that cuts out the sound <laughs> of the mower and the, and then you can talk to them while you're cutting the grass, while you got a cheeseburger hanging out your mouth, having a panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> Call them in. Call them in between in between stops. Yeah. Yeah. In between stops. There you go. On your way to the next one, Matt Sullivan. The right people listening. Yeah. What's up, peeps? Landscapes, Landscapes of America. America. Who's this? And Keith, I've went from sixty four hundred in April booking to forty two. Wow, wow. And I really think I couldn't have done it without your videos, podcast. This is my first year too. Much love. Oh, Keith, that's a good one there, buddy. That's a keeper. Doing from 6400 in April bookings, MCM lyrics, to $42,000 in May. And I really don't think I could have done it without your videos and podcasts in my first year. First year, bro. Congratulations. And I hope everybody in the first year reads that. Speaking of first year. <gasps> where'd he go? Maybe just think of it in my book, the fir your first year in the landscaping business. Yes. Became an Amazon bestseller in its category. Go to audible.com and download the audiobook and listen to it while you work, especially if you're in your first year or if you're just getting started or second or third year. I promise you it's a great book. You will love it. Yeah, now, or the paper book, book back book. Who's got time to read the paperback book? Bam. Love it. Love it. Yo, guys. Carmen Knoll. Oh, I got to scroll down. More comments. Thanks. Thanks. He says, Google My Business Updates are the way, Keith. I get three to four quotes after posting an update. It's absolutely insane. Yes, Google My Business now strictly is on Google Maps. Be all over it. Google Maps. Nick Fire. What up, Keith? What up, Doe? Brandon Bryant says, what's up, man? Where in Pennsylvania? Johnny, says Carmen Knoll. North of Pittsburgh, just north. Very nice. Okay, a couple more comments, and we'll wrap this up. We got Brunner Lawn and Landscape says, Hey, everybody, I just got home from a day of mowing. This is awesome. Yes. Some green industry folk. Johnny, 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 you cutting the grass too fast, says Joel and Miranda. <laughs> yep. You're going too fast, Johnny. Pencil out also. I just caught the chills when I get that feeling. Time to listen. Yes, Josh. sir. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's just real couple more. Dan Smith says, Johnny Mo. Hey. Adamant Landscapes LLC says, How's it going? What up, though? Great program tonight. Bushwhackers Lawn Care, Prior, Oklahoma. Thank you. We appreciate it. And anybody else? Have, oh, Brian Race, who is Mr. Producer. We have a lot of fessing up to do. So when you mess <laughs> up, you fess up. Mess up, fess up. I didn't get a chance to say this last time. Brian Race here right now. If you're listening to this on Apple and Spotify and you see me say, oh, what's up, Brian Race, Mr. Producer. You might have heard Paul Jameson talk about Mr. Producer and Brian Fulton. So when you hear the intros and outros and ads on this podcast where it goes, uh, welcome to the Untrapped podcast, and now here's Keith. Or like the, the ads, this, that's Mr. Producer. He's here right now watching in the show and, and listening. Thank you so that's much, awesome. man. I appreciate you, your talent, your support, your honesty, your integrity. Mr. Producer is the man. Shout out. Okay. Man, the, the comments are coming in. Um, let's get to a couple more. Big Worm. I'll read them because uh, I get I might get a bigger screen here. Going to listen in while I work. Can we talk about paying taxes and when you are just getting going, starting to make good money? Can we talk about basic economics, basic business percentages, et cetera? Uh, I think you should pay your taxes. Get a good accountant. <laughs> I did from the get go. You know, I registered my business, went right into the thing, and, and I had a good accountant. And basically, you know, um, one thing I definitely do is I take every check that I get, 
I break it down. I, I do all my banking on Monday. Every Monday I'll do banking. I get I get my checks in or what I get through online. And then I I pull out my estimated what I feel, say 28%. I pull out 28% of my check. Actually, that's what I do. I pull out 28% of my check and I put it in to a separate account and I make sure it's there. So that's that's the most important thing is making sure that you're just not taking all that money and just paying, you know, doing whatever you want to. And then at the end of the year, because I did that one year, I did, I, my first five years, I really wasn't making any money. So I was getting, I was getting basically a return. And then all of a sudden I got a $10,000 tax bill and I didn't have $10,000. So I learned real quick the hard way. So don't learn like me, take out, I take out 28% of all the checks that, that come through every Monday. <laughs> And I put it into a separate account and then I give it to the IRS. Love it. I also want to add to that. So if you're a, a sole proprietor and you get what taxed on all the, mm -hmm. everything that goes through there, and then if you're a single member LLC, then you have passed through income, but a, a way I'm not an account. I can't give you any advice, but if you're an LLC taxed as an S corp, what you would have to do is put yourself on payroll. You can do mm -hmm. it yourself with your QuickBooks or hire accountant or do it with a payroll company. There's, there's ADP, there's Gusto payroll. We currently use ADP. We're thinking about switching to Gusto. Put yourself on a what is called a fair salary. To the best of my knowledge, it's over 51% of what you make should be in the form of an actual paycheck salary. We do direct deposit through ADP, takes out FICA, Medicare, Social Security, all those different things, and then you run it through. So you're now you're paying payroll taxes, but you're also going to want to pay estimated quarterly tax payments. Yep. You want to do some tax planning with your accountant. I don't know what you would send out anywhere from... 1500 to five grand. I don't know what size your business is, but every single quarter, uh, we're sending in 4,500 per quarter with states to federal and to state. And then at the end of the quarters, when I wrap up everything with the accountant and given the PNL statements, the balance sheets, everything, sit down with them. And then the payroll, the W-2s, and then the earnings, I forget the code, they're different codes of like I-9 and W-9 and W-4 and 1099 and missile and this. So, uh, at the end of the year, sit down with the accountant, and then you find out actually what are you going to owe on top of the forty thousand dollars in taxes you've already given them. And if you paid your quarterlies and everything, you might owe as little as four or five grand if you've done it right. And the in in the goal is to pay enough quarterlies so you really don't owe them anything, or they can end up owing you something. But if you get to the end of the year, or you hire an accountant and they crunch all your books, and it's like you pay your accountant. So you pay them a grand or two grand to go through all this mess. And then now you owe, you know, 18 grand in taxes or something. Um, it's just easier to pay quarterlies. And if you find a small business accountant to help you do all that, I get, I get feel weird talking about this stuff because I'm not an accountant. I'm not legally, I can't talk about this stuff, but find a small business accountant to help you do all that and pay them for advice, get a list of questions and then little by little by little each year, the, the fear goes away and now it becomes fun because now you can like oversave for taxes and be like, oh my God, we have an extra five grand or 10 grand or, um, yes. I don't really talk about this too much. I, I oversaved on taxes, 24, 25, 26, by $25,500, I oversaved on taxes because I have a friend who scares the shit out of me. And he took, oh, bro, the IRS is going to come after anybody who did bad. Like, he just been, this has been going on for like 11 years ago. He told me this thing in my head. And he, he told me, like, you have to save 30% of everything. Well, I didn't know. He was actually said, you save 30% of all gross profits. I was saving 30% of everything. I'm like, this is so much. And at the end of each year, I'm like, I didn't know as much as you said I was going to owe. What's going on here? How come I didn't know as much? He's like, I don't know, man, but just keep on saving it. Because they had audited him, audited him once. Anyways, it's a whole different story. <laughs> so my, my paranoia has cost me lots of pain and suffering and a little bit of extra money in the bank. It was, it's not even worth it, trust me. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> oh, here's a going. Nathan Gundy. What is he saying? Johnny Mo. Uh, trying to start a business, but can't decide if I should go with a Xmark Radius series or a Toro Titan. Oh, geez, it's mower talk. Uh, they're both good mowers. Uh, I like the X mark. Uh, I, I own Toro. I, I don't know. It, it's it's a toss up. 
go don't let that don't get hung up on don't get hung up on that go get a mower and go cut grass (laughs) start to and start the money rolling my man nice dust news bring home my baby boy tomorrow 41 years young my first wow can't wait to put him on the rider congratulations (laughs) congratulations motorcycle is life i've been working three days a week and then i'm going fishing the rest of the week zero stress love it love it whatever it takes wait bill hall what's up (laughs) he said i did a property cleanup today and i'm exhausted (laughs) what's up bill hall jim duffin bill beasted the beast bill beasted the bestest be like Bill. I like Jim Duffin. He always says funny stuff. Or he'll say something totally like sarcastic and crass, but it's funny. And you know, he's not like really trying to be mean. He's just being funny, but he's uh-huh. being a little bit mean, but it's funny. I can't explain <laughs> it, but I love it. Oh, look at this. Parsonic Services says, What? Keith and Johnny Mo? Yes, sir. <laughs> What's up? I enjoy 20 glasses of wine. <laughs> yes, yeah, I like that one. Okay, okay. One or two more comments, then we're out of here. Oh, Johnny Mo, he's awesome. Tell him to do that impersonation, says Eric Evanarius. <laughs> what impersonation Johnny, is you're this? You're going too fast, Johnny. You mow the lawn too fast, Johnny. You're sitting there and you're mowing. You go, zoom, zoom, zoom. My husband used to come home from work and it would take him four hours. It took you 20 minutes, Johnny. 20 minutes you were here. It took him four hours. So I, you I, had a real customer like this? Oh yeah. I she was she was she was just so much. She if I was in the front lawn, she'd be in the front lawn. If I'd be in the back lawn, she'd be in the back lawn. Uh she would be in the window. And you know, I, I quickly realized why her husband took four hours after he got home from work to cut the grass. He didn't want to be around her. Because <laughs> he wanted to. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, that's about it. Make sure there's nobody I didn't miss. One last Bill Hall. You bought four new f- poles and can't wait to go fishing this year. Nothing better than a largemouth bass. All right. Where can everybody find Johnny Moe? Uh, just basically on YouTube, you can uh, check out my channel, Johnny Mo, uh, Instagram, Johnny Mo one, and that's about it. Check out my videos. I've got a whole preflo of videos on business, life tips, and all kinds of stuff. Check me out. Johnny Mo on YouTube. Take out your phone and go on YouTube and type in Johnny Mo, and you will see Johnny Mo and hit subscribe and go to his most recent video. I got an idea. And if you go there, say. I don't know, say Keith sent me. Keith sent me or say what up though or something. And I'll go over there. What up, too. dog? What up, dog? <laughs> Shit. Thanks so much for being on my show, for being on the Untrap Podcast, bro. It's Thank you. it's been a, a true honor. And I'm super grateful to be friends with you throughout all these years, man. And that I, I also am super thankful that I could there's times when I, I've been going through something and I wanted to pick up the phone and talk. Like you were the first person to pop up in my mind in, in a specific topic, and you pick up the phone, and you would, even though as busy as you are, you sit on the phone with me for 45 minutes, and I would get off the phone with you feeling like totally enlightened. And I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Have a great night. All righty. Over and out. Peace. Peace. Hey, I hope you liked the show. And if you like the Untrapped podcast and you get value from it, can you please take a minute and go over to Spotify and leave it a well-worded positive five-star review? It helps boost the rankings on Spotify so the show can get to more people. Therefore, this, these messages can get out to more people and inspire more people so then they can go out and start their small businesses and crush it and get to the next level. It's a huge deal. All right, I'll see you in the next show.